Imagine for a second, somebody ripped you off. They really did you dirty in business and you needed to call the best lawyer in town, the roughest dog, who was gonna go after this person and make right your business wrongs. You wanted someone who would be respected by the courts, but also feared by your competitors. Well, you Google, find someone's details, and you have a great call with them. You're confident about their services. And yet, you go to send them a follow-up to your meeting, and you ask them for their email, and they let you know their Gmail address. <laughs> well, doesn't that just kill someone's credibility at all times? Yet, so many business owners and entrepreneurs are still using Gmail. Well, not today. You are, after this video, gonna have your own brand spanking new email address that is professional, that is secure, and that helps you to grow and expand your business. I'm gonna take you through a guide on how to start from zero and set up your professional email. You're gonna have a business email created with the right domain name for your business, and I'm gonna help you do it for free as well so that you can look professional and you will have professional brand and email representing your business. First things first, you are gonna get started with a domain name. Now I'm assuming you've already picked your business name because every entrepreneur loves registering a domain name before they even start a business. But if you haven't yet, our recommendation on provider is Cloudflare. Not only can Cloudflare help you manage your DNS, which is all the settings related to your domain, we'll go through that in a moment, but they can help you to register domains as well. So we love Cloudflare for that. They're secure, they're fast, and they are very reasonably priced. Now, next up, you're gonna to need to choose between Google Workspace or Office 365. We're big fans of Google Workspace here, and so that is our primary recommendation. And you're gonna to wanna to sign up to a trial of one of those. Now, typically, if this is a new domain, you're gonna sign up without any problems, but if the domain has been used before in one of these systems, well, you might need to work with an expert to make sure the domain is cleared and fresh, and you can start again. But for most cases, nine out of 10, you can go to either Google or Microsoft, sign up for one of their email accounts, and then you'll be able to add your new business domain and get started with a trial. Once you've got your trial configured, let's talk about actually setting up the account. Now, the first account that you create in a Workspace account is gonna be the admin account. And once you've logged into the admin panel, from there, you can go to directory and then users and start adding the different email addresses that you'd like to use for your business. Now, you are gonna to have to pay for each mailbox that you create, so be mindful of that for each one that you wanna create. If you wanna create a mailbox that maybe points to your user account, but you don't necessarily need a extra license for that, or you can use something called an alias. So if you wanna have sales at or info at or orders at your business, they can also come to your email as well. After we've got a couple of users set up, it's time to start activating and verifying. Now, we need to actually verify that we own this domain name with Google before they'll properly activate the account. And verifying that is done via our DNS. Now, sometimes you need to do that manually by logging into your DNS portal and adding a text record. Google will give you instructions on how to do that. But if you used Cloudflare, like I recommended at the start of this video, you can generally use a one-click setup for your Cloudflare account, which will automatically verify your domain with Workspace. From there, it's time to start setting up users. So now that you've got your trial set up, you've got your domain verified and your users are configured, now, at this point, you may be interested in migrating data from another legacy system. It might be coming from Gmail, it might be coming from MacMail, or it might even be coming from the Microsoft world. Well, ITGenius.com helps small business owners all over the world handling the setup and the data migration of Google Workspace accounts for small business owners. So even if you're a sole trader, if you don't wanna try and work out how to move all of your legacy data into this account, well, this is the stage of the setup where you would normally be doing that. If you'd like some help and some handholding with that, you can have our team help you with our affordable and very cost-effective plans to help small business owners get set up with Google Workspace. If you're interested in that, click the link down below the video. If you do have legacy data in an old account, you're gonna to need to move that from that account into Google Workspace. And Google does have some built-in migration tools, which is one good option for you to use. Although we prefer to use third-party tools which perform better and have less chance of errors. If you've got a lot of data sitting in Dropbox or OneDrive and you wanna move that over into My Drive, or even if you've got data sitting in your Gmail account and you wanna move that into your new business account, we've got methods to help business owners make that happen smoothly. And make sure you check out some of the other videos on our channel on how to manage data migration. 
But let's get back to setting up and activating your account. Once we're ready to go live and actually activate our emails, we need to do something important in our DNS again. And this is to add MX or mail records. Now Google has a guide, they call it activating Gmail and it will tell you exactly how to configure the MX records in your DNS. This is a technical process and if you're not comfortable with it, I would recommend you get an expert to help you out. We do also have guides on the channel if you want to do a DIY. If anything goes wrong, of course we're on hand for support. Now, if you set up Cloudflare at the start, you can actually click one button and have Cloudflare automatically configure these records thanks to Google's native integration with Cloudflare. If you've got the ability to do one click, that would be my recommendation because this tends to work every time. But you do need to be careful to make sure you set up your SPF and DKIM records. Now, you may be wondering again, well, what are those, Pete? We have different videos on the channel explaining what these are, but SPF and DKIM are two important DNS protocols that make sure that your emails don't end up in people's spam. Lots of people spam on the internet and in order to combat that, we can add a little flag to our domain name that says emails coming from Google system are legitimate and it makes it less likely that they'll end up in people's spam. As with any technical process, you wanna double check for typos and make sure you follow the instructions perfectly so that nothing goes wrong. A zero where there should be a one or a one where there should be a zero means that computers just don't work. And so I would recommend you check out the testing tool available for free on our website, itgenius.com forward slash DNS. And that will allow you to test out exactly what's happening with your domain and if you've got these DNS settings set up correctly. Once you've got your mail activated, you wanna make sure that you test it. And so you would use an email address from outside your domain to do that. Ideally, not even a Gmail address. So it's completely out of Google's ecosystem, but anything that's not your domain name should be fine. Now you wanna send an email in and you wanna send an email out as well. Make sure the signature is correct, make sure it's arrived properly and make sure that it's not delayed unduly. Emails should pretty much arrive within a minute or two, absolute maximum. And once that's done, high five. Well done, you've got it set up. But that's not all that's left to do in your account. A couple of recommendations that I have for new Google Workspace accounts. So number one, enable two-factor authentication as a policy right across your business. Now Google will prompt you to set up a phone number on your account and that is useful. It's kind of better than nothing, but our recommendation is to go into the admin panel and in the security settings, you can enable two-factor as a overall policy right across your business. My recommendation would be to not even let people use their mobile number for this because there are instances where people can actually steal your mobile phone number and then get access to your account in a sophisticated attack. Use a authenticator app on your phone to get access to your account via sometimes as easy as one click. And you can also switch on pass keys as well as an alternative to using passwords as your primary login source. If you got this far, I'm hoping your account is all rocking and rolling. Remember, if you need help to reach out to us, but let us know in the comments if this was useful and I'll see you in the next one.